and so there's an explicit acknowledgement that Wales is trying to return to the kind of vision for the NHS that Anaira and Bevan had uh, back in the uh, in the 1940s. In education, there's a similar story, in as much as New Labour has continued and consolidated the the so-called quasi market that the Tories introduced, particularly through the 1988 Education Act, which is based on again on a, an ideology of choice, where the parents are the consumers. Uh, the schools are the you know the businesses to which they take their custom. Uh, so you have you know sort of choice of schools, funding tied to pupil numbers, uh, the promotion of more of a business management style, which is facilitated by power uh, control over education being taken away from local education authorities and devolved increasingly to the schools themselves. And of course, the, the, the finished product, if you like, at the end of the day, is the educated child. So it's this market approach to education. Uh, New Labour, after initially condemning the Tory approach and doing things like abolishing grant maintained status has actually recreated much of the Tory agenda. Um, city technology colleges have kind of been reborn as uh, city academies. Um, grant maintained schools are basically trust schools. So there's, there's a great deal of continuity if you compare the situation in education in England now with what the, uh, uh, the Tories did in the 80s. Now again, that whole agenda of choice uh, has been rejected in, in Wales. Um, and there's been much more emphasis on uh, a coherent model that embraces everybody, which is supposed to deliver an equal level of education regardless of people's um, background or geographical uh, location. And there's, there's been a very sort of um, uh, consistent support for a comprehensive model, uh, much more holistic. There's, again, as with healthcare, recognition of the socioeconomic factors that contribute to educational attainment. So uh, free school breakfast, for example, being pioneered in Wales, uh, you know, which, which sort of recognises you know, some of the external factors that, that contribute towards people's attainment. Um, there's been more emphasis on the early years learning because of the, the greater impact um, that has in terms of you know, children's sort of long-term uh, educational career. So the foundation phase in Welsh education, which is about a kind of learning through play agenda based on experience in Scandinavia, where they have you know, far more kind of... Uh, um, comprehensive kind of education system uh, has been pioneered in the last couple of years and we haven't until recently actually, there is no proposal to reintroduce them but uh, top of fees were being rejected in higher education um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's been a maintenance grant reintroduced albeit at, a, at quite a low financial level. So again, as with healthcare, the education system that the Assembly Government has promoted has been based on more kind of progressive egalitarian principles that are more in keeping with the kind of historic traditions of the labour movement. So in these areas where the Assembly has devolved responsibilities, it has made, I think, a, a significant tangible change for, you know, for the better, in our view. In other areas, like, for example, economic development in housing, transport, and so on, uh, the Assembly has only partial devolved responsibility, and therefore those limited powers have meant that it hasn't been able to have, make the same impact that, um, uh, that it has in, 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 in health and education. And I think you, know, you can see with the, the current recession, uh, to the extent that it's, it's been able to um, make a difference, the Assembly has sought, or the Assembly Government has sought to do that. For example, uh, there's a scheme called Pro Act at the moment, which is a kind of uh, uh, wage subsidy to promote retraining for, for people in firms who are on short-term hours, who are, um, who are um, facing the threat of, of, of redundancy. Um, but in general, in, in economic policy, the Assembly doesn't have very many powers. Now, part of the agenda of the left and um, certainly the agenda that we support has been about uh, deepening the devolution settlement. The original 1998 um, uh, Government of Wales Act only provides for very limited uh, capacity to make legislation. In fact, it's not really legislation as we would recognise it. Um, the 2006 Government of Wales Act, which is the, the, the sort of regime that is in place at the moment, um, came out of a, a process of discussion after... Um, the Assembly Government set up a commission to look at the electoral arrangements and the powers of the Assembly. Now, that commission reported in 2004 and recommended that in the devolved policy areas such as health, education, agriculture, etc., uh, the Assembly should be able to make primary legislation which has the same effect as both the Westminster Parliament and the Edinburgh Parliament. Now, that was rejected by um, Welsh Labour, um, mainly by Welsh Labour MPs, actually. Uh, I think basically for reasons of self-interest as much as anything, uh, because of a, a, a feeling that um, if the Assembly got that power to make primary uh, legislation, uh, it would basically mean a reduction in certainly the status of Westminster MPs and possibly in their numbers as well. And so there was a, a resistance uh, to, you know, to extending devolution in that way. Uh, what we saw, therefore, um, in, the, in the 2006 Act, uh, 
was uh, a much more limited settlement, which means that in theory the Assembly um, can write legislation, but in order, it, in order for it to actually be passed, uh, it has to be approved by both Houses of Parliament in Westminster. So it's an extremely kind of constrained and limited uh, addition to the powers. Um, and really there's been um, an increasing demand, I think, on the left, certainly in part of the Labour Party and, and certainly in Plaid Cymru, for that, that, that sort of capacity to make legislation to be increased and for primary powers to be delivered. Now, the current coalition between um, Labour and Plaid Cymru uh, which came into power after the 2007 Assembly elections, uh, has made a commitment to a referendum on primary powers um, by 2011, which is when the next Assembly elections are due. Uh, and at the moment there is a lot of discussion about you know, when uh, this will actually take place. Uh, a convention has been set up which will take evidence from uh, the public in Wales to determine you know, when would be the best time uh, to, 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 to sort of uh, organise a, a referendum. Uh, now our argument in the book is that in order for the Assembly really to have the capacity to make a difference uh, to, to people in Wales, particularly at the time of the press and when people's livelihoods are very much under threat because of the recession, that kind of primary lawmaking power is essential. And you know, it, it's a measure of the residual conservatism of the Labour Party that um, there is still resistance to that. And in fact, the new or recently uh, uh, restored Secretary of State for Wales, Peter Hayne, has been making comments even this week um, that it's not the right time and so on. Um, our argument, really, in the book is that the principle of devolution, self-government, has already been established by the referendum in 1997, <coughs> and in fact, uh, on that basis, uh, there is really no need to have a referendum. Having said that, it's the, 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 the commitment is now there, and therefore the only option is to press for the referendum to be held as soon as possible, and for the left to campaign for a, a, a yes vote. Um, most recent referendum, sorry, most recent opinion polls on the subject uh, have suggested that public opinion in support of deeper devolution is actually increasing um, and uh, you know, it, it, in, in the last year or so it's, it's gone above 50% uh, for the first time. Um, we feel that uh, you know, the left within the Labour Party and elsewhere should be getting behind that and campaigning in favour of a yes vote and only on that basis really will the Assembly be able to consolidate what it's achieved so far and um, you know, again to, sort of, to, to extend the kind of progressive agenda that's already been developed in health and education into other areas of, uh, of government policy. And on that note, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to Nick.